Okay, Prince Albert thought that a modern building was necessary to celebrate England's empire. This modern building was the Crystal Palace at Hyde Park. A first version of the Crystal Palace was built, originally planned by a gardener specialized in greenhouses named Joseph Paxton. It was then moved on the top of a hill, visible from everywhere downtown in London. It was made of iron, glass and wood. What was exhibited inside was to be visible from outside as an anticipation of today's globalization. Goods had to be easily transported from one place to another at low cost and in short time. It was destroyed by a fire in 1936. President Winston Churchill said, it's the end of an era. The great exhibition of the works of industry of all nations was held at Crystal Palace in 1851 so that everybody could see the scientific and technological achievements after the second industrial revolution which for the first time implied the use of coal and of combustion engines. Uh, at the same time people could admire the diversity and biodiversity in the wide British Empire, which was so vast that it covered one-fourth of the world, Australia, India, North America and South Africa. That's why Queen Victoria named herself Empress of India. She was so proud about it. Queen Victoria reigned from June the 20th, uh, 1837, to January the 22nd, uh, 1901. It's the second longest reign in the history of Britain after Elizabeth II. During the reign of Queen Victoria, the British Empire reached its maximum. Uh, European imperialism was described by Kipling and Conrad. They held opposite points of view. Kipling made an apology of imperialism, he justified it with Western young people to take it up, to take up imperialism and becoming a colonizer. Conrad made an indictment of imperialism, he defined it as an act of oppression. He wrote that imperialism is not a good thing if you look at it from close, from a closer a look. Kipling was born in Bombay, India in 1865. His father, John Lockwood Kipling, was principal of the G.G. Bayhoy School of Art. He was an architect, an artist, uh, who had come to the colony, to India, to encourage, support and restore native Indian art against the incursions of British business interests. After a happy childhood in India, surrounded by nature in a sort of paradise, Roger and his sister Trix, Beatrice, were sent to England for their schooling years. Roger was forced to leave college because his family could not afford it anymore. He went back to India and started a career as a reporter, a new career as a reporter, for an Indian newspaper. He also started writing short stories and poems and met an American editor whose sister became his wife. So he married this American editor's sister. And so the, the Kiplings, Roger and his wife went to live in the US. After a few years, they moved back to India. Kipling wrote some novels uh, 
um, in the Jungle Book and its sequel that Kim and Captain Courageous and a few poems, uh, the most important famous of which are If and White Man's Burden. White Man's Burden is a seven stanza poem, so a poem made of seven stanzas, uh, seven stanzas, uh, written in, this is a stanza, as you can see, the stanza one, um, written in uh, 1899 on the occasion of the American invasion of the Philippines. In the white man's burden, Kipling justified imperialism. Uh, Kipling, so he had a positive view about imperialism. Kipling defined the imperial conquest as a mission of civilization, a burden, not an honor. So actually, this is the text, and here you can find uh, some commentary. Um, from the very title of the poem, the white man's burden, we understand that Western colonizers had a burden, a hard task, not an honor. You can see that burden is a word with a negative uh, connotation. From the very first line, that is, take up the white man's burden, um, from the very first line, Kipling encourages white people to take up such a burden. Kipling defined imperialism as a mission. Western people had to send their sons to exile. Western young men had to go and live in the unknown lands of India, Africa and Australia. They lived in danger not in comfortable conditions. They had a mission to serve natives, to work for their profit, for the profit of the natives, to bring them the light of Western civilization. They were not rulers. They were serfs, servants, sweepers for those people. People who, as you can see here, people who were half devil and half child, half devils and half children, because they could be, these people uh, could be as cruel as devils and at the same time as naive, as simple as children. And these people were not even grateful. They hated Western colonizers. Native peoples are like kids who need care and guards, but just like kids do, they are not grateful to those who look after them. And uh, let us look at what the reward, what the price can be for these young British uh, men who were sent to exile to the colonies. What, what was their reward? What did they get after so many years in danger, far away from friends and family? They were hated, they were blamed, they were judged as cruel oppressors who had stolen their land and their freedom. According to Kipling, natives compared Western colonizers to Moses, who freed the Jews from the Egyptian slavery. But have a look here. Um, even Jews, they were so tired, they were so afraid of uh, moving through the desert that they wished Moses had never freed them. They wished they had stayed in Egypt, even though they were slaves. And so are these native peoples. Somehow they regret um, being saved from, uh, saved from uh, uh, the oppression of ignorance. They did not want to be freed from their condition of ignorance, from their naive life. 
they used to be happier before. That is why it was so hard for Western colonizers to give them the light of civilization. And uh, the, these uh, British young bay here means European young course. European or you can also say British you can say Western using a single word Western young colonizers could not even complain about it about the, the dangerous life they led if they did if they cried for freedom too loud they would be blamed by the natives and by the rest of Western community once they went back home. These young people could not give up their mission, otherwise they would be judged by native peoples for being cowards, for believing in empty and false gods, for only chasing profit and wealth, but who else would judge and blame these young people? They would also be judged by their peers, by their community, by the Western community, for not doing their job as they were not man enough.